1945 was a perfect year for Alabama football. The Tide was in its last full season under legendary coach Frank Thomas. His teams had already won two national championships, and he would finish with a record of 115 wins, 24 losses, and seven ties. His 45 club was the second of Bama's war baby teams. It included two men who'd become members of the Alabama Team of the Century. There was center Vaughn Mancha, an aggressive player who starred on offense and defense, who was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1990. The other star of the 45 Bama team was Harry Gilmer, a tailback in Coach Thomas's Notre Dame box formation, the equivalent of today's quarterback. Harry was best known for this ability, the jump pass, and it helped him to be one of the best passers in Bama history. But there was so much more to Gilmer. He led the 46 team in passing, rushing, interceptions, punt returns, and kickoff returns. This 1945 season would see Gilmer name the SEC's Player of the Year, and he'd lead Alabama to a 10-0 record. The Tide's last trip to the Rose Bowl, where Bama beat Southern Cal 34-14 on New Year's Day 1946. In the year of 45, Gilmer and Bama's stiffest test came from a group of Georgia Bulldogs led by their own triple threat, Charlie Trippy. Bama and the Dogs got together on October 27, 1945 at Legion Field in Birmingham for one of Bama's greatest games. <laughs> present Bama's Greatest Games. Welcome to Bama's Greatest Games. I'm Tom Roberts, and joining me is a legend in Alabama football history who never played it down. John Forney. <laughs> Just got these great hairs watching and being nervous, Tom. <laughs> well, for better than 50 years, you've watched it, and on this edition of Bama's Greatest Games, we're going back to one of the earliest, 1945, Alabama against Georgia, Harry Gilmer against Charlie Trippy. Where were you when that game was played? Well, I was in Tokyo Bay on a hospital ship called the Bountiful, and I listened to it. Bill Stern was broadcasting. Bill Stern, of course, back then was the Keith Jackson of uh, right. broadcasting, though in those days on radio. But I heard it, and, and it was a fairly nice day, and I was able to listen to most of it. But uh, two months later, when Alabama played in the Rose Bowl that year, I was on an LCVP going up to Tokyo. Going, psh, psh. It was sleeting, and Bill Stern kept saying, what a beautiful day it is in Pasadena. And the tears are rolling down my cheeks because those are my teammates, the Gilmers and Lowell Tew and those guys were my teammates. Well, I wanted to ask you about that. So many of the football players in the 45 season had been at war. Some that would have been on that team were still in the service. Was college football, like I think it was, was it a, a morale booster for the guys overseas? Oh, tremendously, absolutely. People uh, really, uh, I say fought to listen to it, but they, they knew it was going to be on, and they would get on the ship, they'd pipe it through the whole uh, system where yeah. you could hear the game. So it, it was a tremendous thing. And, and a lot of the guys on that 44-45 uh, war baby, Frank Thomas's war babies, uh, were... Everybody knew about them. They really did. Even the guys uh, on, the, on, the, on the ship with me who didn't have any reason such as I did to follow Alabama football. Well, we're going to find out a lot more about them in the next few minutes as we go back to 1945 for that Alabama-Georgia game. I have to tell you a couple of things. Thanks to the Bryan Museum, we have some beautiful color film of the game. Unfortunately, when the museum received the film, it was not exactly in the greatest of shape, so we're missing a few touchdowns. But uh, it does show some great football played by the likes of Gilmer and Trippy. So let's go back to October 28th, 1945, Alabama and Georgia in Legion Field. The Tide has just recovered a bulldog fumble at the Georgia 25-yard line. Bama has the football off at Georgia 17, tied moving. Gilmer handing to Norwood Hodges. He gets two to the 15. Now it's Hodges on the direct snap. He bobbles it forward, winds up gaining a little better than two. It's first down off at Georgia 13. This time the snap to Gilmer. He hands to Hodges. Dogs stack him up the line, drop him for a yard loss. 
Lowell, too, gets the snap now. Behind blockers, he heads left and picks up four more. Two on the carry again. Only a yard at left end of a nine. But of an next play, a touchdown pass from Gilmer tomorrow that we're missing. We do have Morrow kicking the extra point. Bama's on top, seven to nothing. Bedak kicks it off for Bama. It's going to Trippy at his own five-yard line. He heads this way and returns it 17. It's first and 10 for Georgia at the Dodds 22. On first down, Rosh at quarterback. Hand off to Trippy. Piles forward for six to the 28. Second and four, Roush goes with a toss sweep to the far side. Trippy has the ball and a bunch of Bama defenders who drop him back at the 25. So the dogs are forced to punt. Trippy kicks it away. It only goes 30 yards out of bounds to Bama 45. On first down, the tide goes left, picking up three yards to the 48. Second and seven, this time Bama goes off right guard. A flag on the play and a five yard walk off against Bama. Ball goes back to the 43. Box moves this way this time. The snap to Gilmer. He's headed off right tackle, only three yards on the play. The tide's forced to punt. Gilmer's back to kick. He just barely gets it away. The coverage good. Trippy gets very little for the dogs. First and 10, George at the 25. Roush hands it to Gutsteiner. He veers off right tackle, picks up eight yards in the blade of a 33. Second and two, Steiner in motion this way. The direct snap to Trippy. He's looking to throw and finds Edwards wide open at the 40. Gilmer grabs him, but the play makes 11 yards and a first down at the 44. The handoff to Trippy going to the far side. Looks like Jack Green of a tackle. The ball's loose. Lee Flowers and Tom Whitley claim the ball for the tide at the Georgia 45. Apparently, Coach Thomas wants to take quick advantage. Gilmer back to pass. There's the trademark, the jumper. Intended for two along the near sideline. It's incomplete. On second down, Gilmer with the ball again. He's throwing for the end zone. Two's there, but he has a defender with him and can't quite get to the football. Third and 10 from the 45. Harry wants to throw one more time, but the Georgia defense must be covering every Bama receiver. Gilmer scrambles, finally decides to run it, picks up five to the 40, but he's five shy of the first down. So Bama has to kick it again. Gilmer's back, gets knocked down, no flag, punt goes out of bounds, but Georgia 19. On first down, Roush tries the to toss sweep to Trippy. Again, it goes nowhere. Flowers there to drop Trippy for a loss of one back to the 18. Second and 11. Cooley with a direct snap to Trippy. He's throwing it again to Edwards. Nice open field tackle by Hal Self at the 21. Trippy back to punt for the dogs. And he gets away a long, booming kick, 51 yards. Gilmer takes it at his own 28. Look at him keep his balance and return it 12 yards to the 40. Vaughn Mancha at center for the tie. Direct snap to two, goes right up the middle, five yards to the 45. Davis takes the snap this time. He gets two more to the 47. It's third and three for the Tide. Gilmer hands it to Davis, heading to the far side. Georgia there to stop him at the 48, bring it up, fourth down. Gilmer's back to punt again. And look at the Georgia rush. He has to hurry, kick is off the right side of his foot. Only goes six yards, out of bounds at the Georgia 44. Roush tosses it to Trippy, who wants the throw. But the tide bearing down on him. Charlie gets the pass away. It's Gilmer there to take it away from the intended receiver at the Bama 33. First down, Grant fumbles it away. Georgia recovers. And one play later, Trippy hauls it 33 yards to the end zone. Play we don't have in this film. And the first quarter's over. It's a 7-7 tie. So at the end of the first 15 minutes, we're all even. We've seen a lot of great plays. And John, we've also seen some great coaching. Absolutely. Coach Frank Thomas, of course, Tom, I grew up in Tuscaloosa, as you know, and back in the 30s, uh, he was one of my idols, he and Coach Crisp, and, and uh, it was just a, a wonderful thing, and I salute him, and his health gave out, and he couldn't right. coach through his prime, which is tragic, because Coach Thomas had the reputation of being the best guy in America to coach for one single game, to point toward one single game. Hmm. And I think I can quickly give you some examples of that, because in 1938, he upset Southern Cal out there 19-7 to on the opening game. 
Uh, the next year, they beat Fordham, which had upset 76 at the Polo Grounds in New York. Uh, thereafter, they played uh, Texas A&M in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, they won that game in a brilliant game. I'm sure that's one of your greatest games. If not already, it will be. And then, of course, uh, they beat uh, Boston College in the Orange Bowl game. I happened to see that game. It was just great. And, of course, during the, four, uh, the 45, uh, at the, really the start of 45, the Duke-Alabama game that, that Granlin Rice, the great sports writer, said was the best college football game ever, and that was one of Thomas's monuments. It really was. He was a great coach. Well, and obviously there's another monument in the form of a, a football player he had named Bryant, too. Yes, sir. He had Bryant. He had uh, Don Hudson. Uh, they, he took those to the Rose Bowl. And, of course, I, I don't know whether he had to point. I guess you don't have to point to that Stanford game. Alabama won that 29-13. But Coach Thomas had very, very severe hypertension and had to give up coaching in 46. And mm -hmm. Coach Drew came in. And, you know, with today's drugs, he probably would have been in fine shape. But it was a terrible case of hypertension, and he had to give it up. Uh -huh. But he was, he had a great, he had, he had played for Newt Rockney at Notre mm -hmm. Dame. Right. And so he brought that down south. He was at Chattanooga, then at the University of Georgia, and then came over to take over for Coach Wade. And I believe it was 1931. So he served Alabama for about 15 years. Well, he's now coaching against his uh, old school Georgia. And we're going to go back to the second quarter of the Alabama-Georgia game from 1945 next on Bama's Greatest Games. Now a timeout on Bama's Greatest Games. In this timeout, let's talk more about the tied coach in the 1945 Georgia game, Frank Thomas. Coach Tommy, as he was called, led Bama from 1931 to 1946. His teams were unbeaten three times. They won the national championship in 1934 and 1941. They won the SEC title four times. Under Frank Thomas, Alabama played in the Rose Bowl three times. The last came on January 1st, 1946. His quarterback was Harry Gilmer. Gilmer played for Thomas for three seasons. And it's obvious Gilmer had all the respect in the world for Coach Tommy. 45 was his full season. Okay. In 46, he coached uh, the first half of the season and then uh, went to Duke Hospital for the rice diet. Oh, yeah. And uh, Tom Lee took over and finished out that year. But uh, that was the end of his coaching. So I was on the last team he coached. And what kind Thought of the world of him. What kind of coach was he? Oh, he was a great coach, and he was so much smarter than all the rest of us. He knew what we were thinking about, so we couldn't ever get in trouble because he, he told us not to do it before we'd really confirmed we were going to do it. In an earlier interview, Gilmer also remembered that Coach Thomas was a motivator, like before the 46 Rose Bowl. Back and forth he paces. Back and forth. He gets in front of our very best football player, who's our center, named Vaughn Mancha. He gets in front of Mancha, and he stops, and he snaps around facing Mancha. And Mancha's sitting there with his helmet already on, his elbows on his knees. And he says to Mancha, or he says to the team, but in front of Mancha, for us to win today, We've got to block and tackle. He said that in a very firm, stern voice. Then he repeated, block and tackle. The third time was a scream. The fourth time he hit Matcha's shoulder pads with both fists and he screamed, block and tackle, block and tackle. And he, he was like a madman. We had never seen him do this before. This is a, a first. Then, just as suddenly, he said, let's go. And with that, we jumped to run out of the locker room, and they couldn't get the door open. The door had to open back to the inside. So the door didn't get opened in time, and we all jammed up at the door. Now, he winds up behind us, and he screams. I said, let's go. And with that, we surge again just as the door comes open, and it's about three or four steps out and down into the tunnel, 
and the entire team piles up there and literally as I went out out of the locker room I walked right across players that were ahead of me who had stacked up We're in 1945, Alabama against Georgia, and clearly the star of the game that day for Alabama was Harry Gilmer. And John, I don't know whether the song I'm Just Wild About Harry was written about Gilmer or not, but it could have been by Alabama fans. Well, they could certainly add some verses to it. That's <laughs> for saying specifically Harry Gilmer. I tell you, Harry was a brilliant football player. I had a friend who he used to say, you know, he don't look like a football player till they snap the ball. And that is so true. He was a great, he was a true triple threader. He could punt. That wasn't his strong point. But passing and running and playing defense, he was just uh, a fantastic player. In fact, uh, in the pros, he started off in Washington and went to Detroit thereafter. Mm -hmm. And he played defensive back for the D D Detroit Lions. He was... I always felt like it was one of the deadliest tacklers that I ever saw. If, if Harry got close to you, he could make the tackle. We see that in this game. Did, did his teammates realize what kind of a star they had on their hands? I tell you what, I told I told Harry sometime and within the last couple of years after doing some interviews on my own, of because those guys were my teammates. I really knew them yeah. all personally. And in talking to them, they didn't just admire Harry, they loved that guy. They, they had the greatest respect for him, and I told Harry, I said, Harry, you can go to your grave knowing that you've got the, the total and the absolute respect and love of the guys you played football with, and it's true. Well, I'm but sure. The, the jump pass, mm -hmm. that's just part of it. He was the complete football player. Well, I'm sure there are a lot of other reasons they loved him besides his football playing ability, but that's what we're looking at in this one. Let's get back to 1945, Alabama and Georgia tied at seven apiece as we go to the second quarter. We open the second quarter with St. John kicking off for Georgia. Gilmer takes it for Bama at the five. The dogs are there, though, and he makes it back only to the 15. On the very first play, two raced 49 yards to the Georgia 36. From there, Gilman to the far side picks up four to a 32. Second and six, Gilmer hands off to Hodges. Coming this way, the dogs stop him after only a yard. It's third and five of the dogs 31. Time for Gilmer to put the ball in the air. This time, he finds Richard Gibson for 13 yards. Bama first down of a Georgia 18. Tides rolling, Gilmer back, throws another perfect strike, this time to Fred Grant out on the flat. He goes down the sidelines for 14 yards. It's first and goal at the four-yard line. Now the Georgia defense is rugged. Dogs drop Grant for a loss of one, back to the five. The direct snap to Grant, he follows self for a hole at right tackle, piles his way close to the Georgia one. Now Grant right behind Macho, but the dogs stop him again at the one-yard line. On fourth and goal, Bama's going for it. Gilmer on the sweep right, cuts back in, but he runs into a crowd. Georgia has held inside the one. Dogs want nothing to do with the ball that close to their own goal line. Trippy kicks a 46-yard punt. Bama again is in Georgia territory at the 48. On first down, Gilmer is back to pass. He hits quarterback Self at the 34. He's hit immediately, but the play makes 14 and a first down. Three plays later, Gilmer hits Fred Grant for a touchdown. Morrow kicks the extra point. It's Alabama 14, Georgia 7. Self kicks off this time for Bama. It goes to Donaldson. He slips and falls at his own 18. From there, the dogs go up the middle. No gain, but Bama's offside, and the ball comes out to the 23. Reed takes it for the dogs this time. He gets three to the 26. On second down, Trippy wants to pass. Gets heavy Bama pressure. Finally throws it, but a lineman catches it. That's illegal. Dogs hit with a penalty. Back to the seven. They're really backed up in punt formation, but Trippy's running the football. Bama's there. Five defenders in all to bring him down at the three. This time, Trippy has to kick it away. It's Gordon Pettis deep to receive for the Tide, and he gets it at the 46. Gordon hauls it all the way back to the Georgia 34. 
On first down, Gilmer gives it to James Robertson. He's trying to get around left end, but the dog stopping for a yard loss back at the 35. Second down, 11 to go. Gilmer moving right. Here's the jump pass to Pettis. He's wide open and picks up 13 down to the Georgia 22. First down, Bama. Gilmer wants to throw again, but here comes a great Georgia rush. Harry has to scramble. Gets by one man, but finally the dogs bring him down to the 29, a seven-yard loss in the play. The Tide gets that seven back on this play. Then on a play we don't have, Gilmer throws another touchdown pass to Hodges, and Alabama's on top, 21 to 14. So feed acts on to kick it off again for the Tide, deep to the dog Steiner. He brings it out to the 23. On first down, Roush drops back to pass. He's going long, appears to have a receiver open, but it looks like Gilmer who gets there in time to break it up. Incomplete, second down, Georgia. Again, Roush wants to pass, loses the snap. Dogs recover, but it's a loss back to the 21. Third and 12. Trippy passing this time. It's Richard on the reception. And look at him run. Dogs look like they might be going all the way for a touchdown, but Norwood Hodges chases him down for Alabama. Dogs are deep in tied territory to 13, a gain of 66 on the play. First and 10 for Georgia. The direct snap goes to Trippy. He's back to pass, gets it to a receiver, but Hodges and Gilmer are there to stop him at the 11. Trippy's back to pass again. Great rush from Alabama. He tries a Gilmer jump pass, throwing to the end zone. Two's there to intercept it for the tide, ending the threat and the first half. Bama goes to the locker room on top, 21 to 7. I have to keep reminding myself as we watch this Georgia-Alabama game back in 45 that Charlie Trippy was just out of the Army. He wasn't even in good playing shape. But, John, he was a great football player. Literally, Tom, he just come back after he got about 10 days' work, I think, before playing. But Charlie Trippy, I guess if somebody made me, forced me to pick probably the best player I have a person. So I, I believe Trippy would have to be my choice hmm. because uh, in watching him in pre-war and also post-war, he could do everything and, and was so brilliant. The, the funny story is that, that uh, I think Harry Mayer told it, said that uh, Charlie Trippi's high school coach was coach of the year in Ohio. Charlie Trippi's co college coach, Wally Butts, was coach of the year in college. When he went in the service, his service coach was coach of the year. And when he went to the pros, Charlie Cosman of the Chicago Cardinals was the coach of the year. Somebody said, isn't it amazing that all those coaches reached their height of coaching when Charlie happened to be there? <laughs> <laughs> Just a coincidence, I'm sure. But, but Charlie and, and Harry, I think the Southeastern Conference started in 32, I believe, and here we are in the mid-90s. And two of the greats of that whole 60-year span played that day in uh, that Legion Field. Well, the thing that amazed me about Trippy is that uh, just like Harry, all phases of the game, but this was a big guy, too. He was very big, and he handled it well. It was completely poised. I remember that so well. And uh, he, he ran the ball. He was one of the greatest at cutting back and getting away mm -hmm. and just being elusive for his size, as you say. Especially for the size. And uh, he, he he was a sum. We handled him that day, but the next year he got us in Athens. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that has a habit of, of happening That's like right. that. Well, we're going to take a halftime break here, and as we do, let's look at the Million Dollar Band as they performed back in 1945 with Good. music from today's Million Dollar Band. timeout on Bama's greatest games. In this timeout, let's talk more about Georgia star Charlie Trippi. He was a definite triple threat who started his career in 1942, then went to serve in World War II. 
He came back to Georgia in 1945 and played on the Bulldogs' undefeated and untied 1946 Sugar Bowl championship team. In his career, Trippy ran for 1,669 yards, averaging better than six yards a carry. And oh, could he pass. More than 1,500 yards, hitting better than 51%. He threw for 15 touchdowns and ran for 27 more. He and Harry Gilmer dominated the all-star teams in the mid-40s. Gilmer remembers that Trippy had an impact in 45, but really came on strong the next year. Oh, Trippy was a great player, and uh, uh, Trippy had just returned to the Georgia team and, it, and really wasn't even in good shape yet by the time we played him. And uh, he proved that once he got in shape, he was ready to play and uh, kill us the next year. But uh, Trippy is one of the finest players ever. And uh, we did beat him uh, that in 45 when we played him, but they killed, he killed us in 46. We're watching the 1945 Alabama-Georgia game, and John Forney, for young fans, the offense we're looking at here is a, a little bit different. The Notre Dame box, though, was wide open, exciting football, wasn't it? It was great football, and the thing about it is, as you noticed on the film, that when you shifted to the right, it put the left halfback, who was really the tailback, mm -hmm. into the key formation. When you shifted to the left, the right halfback became the tailback. But usually, Harry Gilmer was the left halfback, for example, a little two was the right halfback. Uh, Harry was in that position most of the time. But basically, the old single wing was just the power play where you had the blocking, blocking back, mm -hmm. and then... Uh, you go off either to the left, but like we talked about just a few minutes ago, Tom, uh, Vaughn Mancho, who is an All-American now in the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. he could snap the ball. He didn't have to snap his tailback. That's he right. could go to the fullback, and so they could do all kind of spin moves off of that, and uh, they did it pretty successfully. Well, and Harry Gilmer is recognized as a quarterback as far as Alabama football history is concerned. And really, the tailback in the Notre Dame box was, was what we the call the quarterback. quarterback. Exactly. So I guess the, the, today's audience watches it like, team lineup in the T would say, well, they're in the T formation, and what are they doing? They suddenly they shift over to the Notre Dame box. Well, it's a wild one, and uh, we're going to go back to Legion Field in Birmingham in 1945, going into the second half, Alabama leading Georgia 21-7. to Alabama's kicking off to start the third quarter to Steiner at the five, and he's going to get a good return. 31 yards, Steiner comes out to the 36-yard line. On the very first place, Steiner fumbles. Alabama recovers at the Dogs, 36. First and 10, Bama. Tide shifting. Snap goes tomorrow. Slides between Mancha and Wozniak for five yards to a 31. Second and five, two. The same hole gets three more to a 28. It's third and two, and Mancha is snapping the ball to everybody. Hodges this time for two yards and a first down at the 26. Gilmer wants to pass, but here comes the Georgia pressure, so Harry has to run the football, manages a yard to the 25. It's second and nine. Gilmer back to pass again, trying to hit two at the line. It's incomplete. Possession play coming for Bama. Gilmer back to pass under a lot of pressure, looking for a receiver on the far sideline. His pass is off the mark. So that brings up fourth down, and Bama's going for it. The Georgia defense going for it also. They're forcing Gilmer to scramble. He fumbles. Tide recovers, but the ball goes over on downs. Georgia has it at its own 35. On first down, Trippy tries the middle. Two and alignment slap him down for no gain. On second and ten, dogs come to his side, but Self makes the tackle. A gain of three on the play. Third and seven, Trippy's back to pass, looking long. But two's there to cover for Alabama. It's incomplete. Georgia has to punt it away. Trippy does the kicking, only a 27-yarder. He goes out of bounds at the Bama 35. Hodges tries right in, nothing there, bringing up second and 10. Gilmer's back to pass, and look at this one. Dogs all over him, but somehow Harry gets it away, complete to Steiner for 15 yards. 
First down, Bama at midfield. Here's Hodges at left tackle. He gets forward of a Georgia 46. Second and six, two this time. Picks up four more to the 42. Third and two. Georgia's ready for this one. Dropping Gilmer after only a yard. Bringing up fourth down. So Gilmer is back to punt. He kicks it high to Trippy at his own 10-yard line. And here comes Charlie running it back. 25 yards in all. Georgia first and 10 at the Dogs 35. Now Georgia is about to get back into the game. Roush drops back. He hits Reed Mosley just over the line. And look at Mosley run. Few blocks here and there, but mostly great open field running. Mosley's going to go 55 yards for the touchdown, 65 yards in all on the play. Jernigan kicks the extra point. Dogs are back to within a touchdown. Alabama still in the lead, 21-14. Jernigan kicks off for Georgia this time, and two's deep to receive for the tie back at the 14. Lowell can only get five on the return. First and 10, Bama at its own 19. Now Coach Thomas decides to give it up. Here's Gilmer on the quick kick. It rolls 59 yards. Dogs all the way back to their own 22. Trippy tries the middle, gets only two to the 24. Here's Trippy again, just a yard to the 25. So it's third and seven. Georgia has to pass. Trippy throws it over the middle. It's incomplete. So it's fourth down now, and the dogs have to turn it over again. Trippy punts it away. Gilmer's back to receive. Harry's returning the football, gets it back to the Georgia 49. Bama needs a score. Tide goes to work. Robertson, two up the middle. Second and eight now at the Georgia 47. Gilmer wants to pass. Georgia defenders are there. They're going to sack Harry back at the Bama 46, a loss of seven. Third and 15. Tide needs a big play. Dogs really rushing again. Harry gets it away to Steiner. He rambles 24 yards to the Georgia 31. First down, Bama. Now, Gilmer goes to the air three straight times. This one incomplete. The others tomorrow for losses. So at fourth down, Harry punts it out of bounds at the Georgia 21. On first down, Trippy's back to pass. A host of Alabama linemen hit him. He fumbles, and Bruno Filippini recovers for the tie at the Georgia six-yard line. First and goal, Gilmer going over five yards inside the Dogs' one. On second down and goal, Morrow just follows the line. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Morrow also kicks the extra point. Alabama has a 28-14 lead late in the third quarter. Alabama to kick off. Smith deep for the dogs, returns at 20 yards to the 27. And we're at the end of the third quarter now with Alabama on top, 28-14. As we're looking at the 1945 Alabama-Georgia game, I'll remind you of the film we're using is from the Paul W. Bryant Museum, and it's a great place for you to visit any time you're on the campus in Tuscaloosa. The Paul W. Bryant Museum, without them, Bama's greatest games wouldn't be possible. We'll look at the fourth quarter of the 1945 Bama-Georgia game next on Bama's Greatest Games. Now a timeout on Bama's Greatest Games, and in this timeout, let's talk more about Tide star Harry Gilbert. One of Bama's all-time legends, Gilmer was outstanding in all phases of the game. Passing, running, tackling, returning kicks, and kicking. The SEC Player of the Year in 1945, Gilmer accounted for 52 touchdowns in his Alabama career. His defensive skills, 15 career interceptions, earned him a spot in the secondary on Alabama's Team of the Century. Bama fans probably remember him more, though, for his unique jump pass. As Harry told me, he didn't start it by design. Well, it was just something natural for me to do. Uh, people had done it long before I did it. Uh, I only jumped when I, was, when I was throwing on the run. And so when you're running, you're usually running at right angles to where you want to throw. 
and you need to get your hips turned around. So by leaving the ground, you can go up and turn your hips around. Now you can throw overhanded just as you would if you stayed on the ground. That was natural for me to do. Uh, I did it maybe a little more than most people had done it. And uh, it, the, for, the system we used, the Notre Dame box, where I was the left halfback and was always running toward my right, not so much to the left, uh, it, the system lent itself to that. And we could have an option run or pass play. It might be an in run or it might be a pass. So I did it a little more. I never was sure that Coach Thomas uh, felt good about that. He never, ever mentioned it, and it was almost as though he was willing to tolerate it, and, uh, it but never said, this is something you can jump on or a play you can jump on or not. He just ignored it. Well, finally, you didn't get hit many, many times while you are up in here, did you? Well, I, I did get hit some, but usually I used it as a protective thing because I could go up and kind of drift away from them, and I would miss the punch, you know, that you get when you're tackled. There's no doubt that the stars of a 1945 Alabama-Georgia game were Harry Gilmer for Alabama and Charlie Trippi for the Georgia Bulldogs. But John Forney, there were a bunch of other good football players on the field. We talked about Vaughn Mancha, but Bama had some stars. We had some real big stars. Mancha and Gilmer, of course, are both in the Hall of Fame, which they certainly should be. But uh, Lowell Chew was a great halfback. Uh, Norwood Hodges, pound for pound, was probably one of the greatest hard-hitting fullbacks mm -hmm. that I'll ever see. And Tom Whitley, who's no longer with us, was a great lineman on that team, as was Johnny Wozniak. Johnny Wozniak was a, was a very fine guard, a fine football player, later became one of the captains for Alabama his, his senior year. And uh, became a pretty outstanding citizen in the Tuscaloosa area. He certainly too. did. And, of course, Norwood was mayor of Anniston for a number of years. Another guy was Ralph Jones. Rebel Steiner was an end for mm -hmm. Alabama, made a good one, too. So they had a lot of very fine players. Hugh Mara, I neglected. He's an old friend of mine, still with us, and, and uh, I visit with him about every couple of years. Well, there's some great ones, and we're going to look at them all as we go to the final 15 minutes of Alabama and Georgia from 1945. Starting the final 15 minutes, Georgia the ball at its own 27. Reed gets four to a 31. It's second and six for Georgia. Roush is back to pass. He's looking for Trippy. finds Charlie. He sidestep a couple of defenders and picks up 27 yards all the way to the Bama 42. First down, Georgia. Trippy back to pass. Bama's defense is there. Charlie has to run and he gets absolutely nothing. It's second and 10 for Georgia. Trippy back to pass again. It's incomplete, bringing up third down. Possession play for Georgia. Trippy acting like Gilmer again. It's almost intercepted. Georgia's got to put it away. Trippy kicks it into the end zone. Bama will have the football at its own 20. On first down, Gilmer picks up a couple to the 22. Second and eight, it's Gilmer again, this time for six yards out to the 28. Now with the lead, Bama's putting on third down. Gilmer gets away a 37-yarder. Trippy on the return. He won't be able to get away from the tide coverage. Georgia the football on its own 35. Now the dogs have to score, so Rosh goes to the air again. One more time to Trippy. He's going to haul it 29 yards to the Bama 36, but he's injured on the play. And we won't see Charlie again in this one. Switching to black and white film, here's Roush to pass again. Twice he's incomplete. Two and Gilmer covering on this one for Alabama. Third down possession play. Roush back to pass. Looks like Daniel Gambrell's going to take his head off. Finally, Whitley sacks him back at the 42. So Georgia has to punt it away. Gilmer on the return for the tide, and he brings it back to the 34. On first down is Hodges with a football, picking up a couple of yards. 
Now it's Gilmer himself to the far side. Harry gains four to the 40. And once more, Bama's putting on third down. Gilmer boots it 36 yards to the Georgia 23. On first down, the dogs stick to the ground and manage only a yard to the 24. Second down and nine. The dogs are coming this way. But look at Hodges and Steiner make the stop for the tie. A loss of a yard on the play. So it's third and ten, and the dogs want to throw. Roush, dropping back to pass, finds Smith open. He's got it and holds it 24 yards to the 47. It's first down, Georgia. Steiner and Hodges, another big play for the Tide, and moments later, Dogs face fourth down, and they have to punt it away. Roush is kicking now. Gilmer is deep for Alabama, and he gets a nice return for the Tide. Back to the 29. Clock's winding down. Bama just wanting to control the football. Gilmer gets the snap and gets four yards to the 33. Now on second and six, we get to see Gilmer as a rugged runner. Check him out on this one. Pulling his way for a dozen yards and a first down at the 45. Again, it's Gilmer up the middle, six yards to the Georgia 49. Now the direct snap to Hodges. He gets three to the 46. It's third and one, and then a first down of a Georgia 43. Tide's going to win this one. Here's Singleton up the middle for five yards to the Georgia 38. Gilmer on the snap this time. Harry picks up three more to the 35. And here comes the final play of the game. Gilmer sneaking straight ahead for two yards. Both teams lining up again, but here at Legion Field, you can see them headed from the sidelines as the clock runs out. The ball game's over. Harry Gilmer and Alabama beat Charlie Trippy in Georgia. The final score, Bama 28, Georgia 14. We've just seen Alabama beat Georgia 28 to 14 from back in 1945. And uh, with John Forney, let's take a look at the highlights, some of the action from this one. We start with Charlie Trippi, and what an outstanding player. Well, that was a fine pass by Shelley, and you notice that, that uh, Georgia kind of buried the T formation. They had a man on the center and snapped right. the direct to him. Here's Harry. Yeah, out of the Notre Dame box, and he uh, completed passes all day long, led the tide to victory. I put this play in because you get to see the jump pass. I believe that's Hugh Mara taking that. He came out of court to the blocking back spot, and he's going to be bumped out of bounds. He wasn't big as a minute either, but a gutty football player. Well, here's Georgia scoring in the second half of this football game. Johnny Roush hitting Reed Mosley. He goes for 55 yards and a touchdown, and it got Georgia back in the ball game. 21-14, they were still down by seven. Pretty nice run here. Pretty nifty running by Reed Mosley. I guess there were some embarrassed faces on that when they came out to talk to coach <laughs> to the coach. Well, Alabama got back into this one as usual with good defense. Here's uh, Bruno Filippini joining the rushers as they force Trippy to fumble, and Bruno gets the football. Down on the six-yard line, so Alabama ought to be taking it under clinching. Yep, first and goal. Here comes Gilmer to the near side, and he's going to go down to the one, and then uh, your old buddy Hugh Morrow gets the touchdown. Good. Running off the fullback spot, good. And it uh, results in an Alabama 28-14 win over Georgia. John, I, I hope that uh, our viewers will agree that we've seen some outstanding football players, particularly Gilmer and Trippy. By two truly great football players. Well, Harry Gilmer was the star of this game. There's no doubt about it. He was also one of six great Alabama quarterbacks honored last spring by the Bryant Museum. Those half dozen all signed their names to 323 footballs that were sold to benefit the museum. Four of the six quarterbacks were on hand to help start the fundraising campaign. Gilmer was joined at a news conference by Joe Namath and Jay Barker, as well as museum director Ken Gaddy. 
For the museum to support itself, we have to generate private funds, external funds. Uh, basically, our salaries are paid through the university and all the rest of the operating fund comes from our activities. So this is another way to do more for the museum. And the funds that we come up with we use to enhance and change the exhibits, come up with new ideas for exhibits, and take care of the things that we have. Gaddy and his staff also hosted a reception at the museum where Ken Stabler joined the distinguished cast. Wouldn't take anything for the amount of time that I spent up here and the relationships that I made. It's just been a real a real experience for me that, that, that lives today and that I enjoy today. And, and uh, these, these two little ones right here are, are also enjoyed. It's a, this is a wonderful facility and anything we can do to help, we're always willing to help. Anything we can always do to help the university and uh, the athletic program of the university in general, we're always willing to. And again, it's just a real pleasure to be here. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful event. Uh, as I said, it, uh, you see people that touch you, that touched you a long time ago. And, it's just really great to be back here to be a part of this. Bart Starr and Steve Sloan added their signatures in a later date. The museum quickly sold all those footballs to Bama fans who shared a lot of memories with their quarterbacks. And we'll see more of them in action in later editions of Bama's Greatest Games. The Thin Red Line, the Rose Bowl. The Houndstooth Hat, national champions, memories all for Bama football fans, and you can relive them all at the Paul W. Bryant Museum on the campus of the University of Alabama. You can see the coaches and the players who've made Bama a winner for more than 100 years. Take a journey through time. Visit the Paul W. Bryant Museum on the campus of the University of Alabama.